Hi there, this is uh, Steve Dell, and this is going to be the first um, video in what I hope will be a series on Luminar 2018, a image editor from MacFun, who are changing their name as it happens to Skylum. So we're going to have a um, look at the video um, now and um, take you through a bit of a walkthrough. So first of all, when you open up the program, you get uh, links on the left hand side of the opening screen. First one takes you to the MacFun website. Uh, they haven't changed their name on the site just yet. And there's lots of uh, videos that will tell you all about the different um, tools that are available to you in Luminar. This one is for the earlier version, um, but there will soon be uh, new versions, I'm sure, if they're not already up there on the latest version. Um, so that's using the first link at the, on the left hand side of the um, opening screen when you go into the software for the first time. That's just showing you some of the different filters that are available. But as I said, it's the old, um, the current version, which will be replaced by the new one from the 16th of November. Also, you notice that on the left, there's a user guide link. So we click that and that takes you to a detailed guide to all the different tools and how to use the software. And uh, there's plenty to get your teeth into there. And also, you can um, download it as a PDF, which should be very handy. Um, I wouldn't suggest printing it out, but at least you're able to view it on your computer without using up uh, internet bandwidth. And at the bottom there, there's just a, um, a look at the pre-order bonuses that are available, whether you um, buy it um, on pre-order or you upgrade from a current version. Next down is more presets. Um, the thing about Luminar is that it comes with a lot of presets um, built in, but there are also ones that you can either buy or download that are free. Um, these are put together by um, professional photographers who want to create um, presets that will give you certain effects and um, they're quite reasonably priced, but like with a lot of image editors, there are also um, free ones that are created by enthusiasts. And uh, you can also create your own presets. It's just showing the um, payment screen if you're going to buy the big Halloween pack. And uh, just scroll down um, in the browser just to show you all the different collections of presets. And um, this is one of the... Um, the really attractive things about Luminar um, is that there are lots and lots of presets. Um, when I first um, started using the program, um, there weren't so many, but now there's plenty and it's growing all the time. You've also got textures, video you to video you tutorials. You know, all tongue tied there. Right, going back with um, Aurora HDR 2018, if you don't know, is a um, software from MacFun for both Mac and Windows. Um, it used to be just available for the Mac, but like Luminon, it's going to be available, well, it is available on Windows already. So we're going to flip back to the program and I'm going to open one of my images. This is um, an image I took um, that we're going to be looking at and I'll show you a bit of basic editing um, that I took yesterday at a local uh, reservoir, which is part of a huge nature reserve just outside Colchester. Um, now you're going to see here that um, because I'm using a fairly old MacBook Pro and the files are 50 megabytes, it takes a little bit of time for um, OS X to um, show you the little preview image. And in fact, um, I got fed up with waiting. And uh, as you'll see in a moment, it's taken a while. That was um, the first photo I took. It's actually part of a time lapse, that one. Um, that would be for another day. I was just testing that um, that time lapse feature out on my Fuji XT2. So I then look at roughly where I think the image I might want. So this one of the swans, but it's not quite the image I want. So I'm going to go up to the little um, grid in the uh, toolbar, and um, that shows small previews, but at least it's easy to find the image you want. And I'm going to choose one of these images that solve sort of, um, trees in water. Uh, small trees, small shrubs, because um, the reservoir, um, being part of a, a nature reserve, um, you will find not just wildlife, but also you find um, different um, parts of the reservoir system. We've got um, 
pools and um, drainage channels and all sorts of uh, things for I presume for overflows when when you get heavy rainfall so uh, there is a part of it where you get these trees that they're all the time and they're underwater um now luminar 2018 like early versions will um install plugins into your other graphic editing programs um, so it's just updating that's the latest version so this is the image i want to work with um, at the top i'll just run through quickly through some of the toolbar um, choices so obviously you can zoom in or out um, you can choose a particular percentage of magnification um, as you can see i'm at 100 percent um, and i'm quite happy with the sharpness of the image which is what i expect from my Fuji camera, the X-T2, which is um, particularly with a very sharp lens. And um, this image was taken without a tripod using my 50 to 140 millimeter 2.8 lens with a 1.4 times teleconverter. And um, it's, it's what's heavier, some camera lens combinations that you might have with Nikon or um, Canon. Um, it's quite manageable even without a tripod and it has optical image stimulation optical image stabilization i should say so here we're just looking at it without the side panel and the bottom panel also looking at what you can export your image to so you can set it up to export your images to your online gallery or to another program where you might want to do a bit more editing um, so there are the ones that have got the plugins installed. Now we're looking at the right hand panel, which is all the various tools for um, editing your image. You've got your histogram, you've got layers, filters, and I'm just going to highlight a few of the different options you have. That's ones for layers or for the current layer. You can um, do various things such as rasterize the layer. If you've added text down or image mapping or adding masks. Um, so I'm going to basically choose a workspace. This is available now, or will be on the 16th in the um, the Mac version, and will come soon afterwards in the PC version. Um, but I'm going to choose black and white because I want to turn it into a monochrome image, and it automatically changes it to a, a black and white image for you with the sort of default settings. Now there seems to be a little bit of a bug here, um, which I need to report. Um, well, I can't quite see the rest of the tool, but that, actually for the purposes of this image, I'm not going to use those options anyway. You can, like in most photo editors, you can alter the luminous, the saturation, the exposure. So there we reduce the exposure, there we increase it. So you can um, tune it to your heart's content. Um, once you let go, the histogram updates. So... That's why you didn't see it moving at first. Um, I find um, using the reset filters the best way of getting back to the default settings because it's very hard with a mouse, at least, to move, um, you know, left or right, and then get it back to zero. And you see the changes in the histogram once you let go of the control, and uh, that's just showing you how useful the histogram is to work out whether your um, shadows of are too dark or your highlights are too bright and getting a, a right exposure you also go backwards using the history um, option so you have structure curves split toning and so on uh, soft glow texture overlays um, visionettes i'm just going to show you um, the visionette so i'm going to change the uh, to make it darker in the corners, or um, you can reduce the size of it so it has less or more impact. Um, you can feather it and also change the inner light. Now, some black and white photographers like to have the corners of their image darker um, than in the original, just to focus the attention on the subject. Anyway, I'll just reset everything back to where it was and um, I'm not going to do anything with the grain. Um, there you can see the settings when you took the picture and the size of the image and how many bits it is. Here we can remove the 
or hide the histogram. There we can hide the layers if you've got more than one layer. Hide the info about the file. Also, we can, um, using those two controls at the top there, um, hide or reveal the presets as well, and as well as the right-hand panel. Now, if you click on categories for presets, you get these various options, um, so you can switch between different sets, different categories. There is a button that says get more presets, but it doesn't seem to do anything in the trial version. I'm sure in the um, actual release version on the 16th that will be working. You can also create your own user presets and they will appear um, in this um, window. So as I say, I tried again just in case I was being a bit impatient, but actually it didn't do anything. I'm going to choose a dramatic one and then you get uh, different options at the bottom. Um, the cold mood would... Um, Probably look like a selenium toned image. Um, you can have a dramatic grunge or dramatic look or enigmatic. And there are more if you slide along than the ones that you see visible at first. And as I say, you can reduce the, the effect basically from zero to 100%. Also, you can look at before and after either using the um, divider or the eye icon to see before and after. And as I said before, you can zoom into 100% if you're a pixel peeper type of person. And you want to look at a really close up. And um, as you can see, it's still sharp. And the, the tone on the after is a bit cooler than the before. And also you can see the changes to the histogram. So as it changes the effects of the uh, red, green and blue channels. So whilst it's image processing, we'll just have a quick look at the before and after again. It's very useful and handy, and um, by zooming in or out as well, you can check different areas of your image, see if it's to your liking before you save it. And So I'm just zooming in um, a bit more into the image by getting rid of hiding for the time being the panels at the right-hand side and at the foot. Again, before and after, using the eye icon. And then you can export to image or elsewhere. I'm going to export this image um, as a JPEG into another folder. I'm going to move the quality level up to high in a minute. I'm just going to give it a put it in a folder that uh, reflects where I took the image and when, so I'll be able to find it more easily. And I recommend doing that um, rather than having all your pictures lumped together in one folder. I'm going to keep the original sizes, the original color space, and um, I'm going to make it high quality. So I'm going to save it into that folder I just created. It takes a little while on a fairly old MacBook Pro um, when you're talking about a 50 megabit file. Megabytes, sorry. I always get confused between megabits and megabytes. <laughs> So once it's done, um, I'll then come out of the program and that'll be the end of the tutorial. So I hope you like what you see and I um, hope you come back to watch more videos and um, these will be available to the public um, at the moment. Once I start to get patrons on board, um, then they'll become only available to actual patrons before. I mean, they will get released eventually onto my YouTube channel. But it might be up to a month after I've had it on my Patreon page. So if you want to be one of the first to see any of these tutorial videos in the future, please sign up and be a patron. You can do so from just $1 a month, and there are rewards for each tier. So thank you for watching, and um, do leave comments. Um, I know it's a bit... Um, amateurish this video is my first one i'm not using anything other than the inbuilt mic so there's a new luminar 2018 icon logo and um i'm now going to stop the recording this is when i recorded the video bit and i'll finish here with the same track thank you very much for watching.